This is Star Talk. Let's take a query. Let's go to the queries. This is Corey Garst coming to us from Google+. Plus. What kind of research has been done to show what effects GMOs do or do not have on humans? Well, this is exactly the point. This is, uh, thank you, Corey, is that his name? That is name? Corey Garst from Google+. Yes, Plus. Uh, from out there. Uh, so what they, we, it has done is that is the one thing you can test is the effects of food. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one straightforward thing you can test that's, that's not that different from 20 years ago. You feed the food to your good friends, the lab rats. You okay. Feed it, yeah, and you and the mice, and you say, "What do you think?" All right. So Steve, so, if that's his name. If that's the mouse's uh, name, Steve. Henrietta. All right. As long as it's not Mickey, you're fine. Ah, uh, I think you, Mickey's really hard to. That's a hard uh, lab rat to, to have. To, Mickey. Well, to kill would be and, really hard. Right. Yeah. Well, for some. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, uh, there's no. The genetically modified food has no effect on us. I mean, that is to say, there's no difference between it and organically raised food. This is scientifically provable. Okay. It's certainly provable to my satisfaction. And uh, that's like the most straightforward thing about it is to see if it still is nutritious and see if, see if it has any allergic effect. And it absolutely does not. And in fact, in general, all of these foods are more nutritious. They're, the well, corn, now that, the kernels now see, are bigger. that is the first time I've ever heard that assertion made. Well, just in general. I mean, you get more soybean per hectare per acre. Oh, I got you. You get more corn per acre per hectare. You get bigger kernels of corn. So from a voluminous standpoint. Well, not just that. If you're going to, if the, if the bushel of corn weighs so many kilos or pounds, how mm. much of that is nutritious corn and how much of that is cob? Unedible, inedible. Okay, cob. that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you get a lot so more. You get a lot more and uh, the, kernel than cob. Yeah, and yeah. that's in that one example, the famous example. Gotcha. So then the other thing that's happened with genetically modified foods, and this may be in the in the future queries. The other thing that's happened is uh, it's led to the success of this technology of allowing you to put glyphosate on fields and then plant things like crazy. Is people have raised enormous tracts of land in a single crop. Because it's easier. Gotcha. <clears throat> and this is so-called monoculture. And this has had two things. First of all, you, you lose diversity in your farming, mm-hmm. and which leads to uh, a loss of diversity in the microbes that support plants and a loss of diversity in the, the, uh, the, the, the rate at which different pollinatable flowers appear. This is to say, okay. if all the soybean plants come to go to flower at the same time, the bees have to work that whole deal. Right. They can't go from this plant to that plant to this plant. You'll notice the cherry blossoms show up first. Right. And then- That's their trick. Right. So the bees and everybody, they show up and do- And they're like, hey, you know, we're doing cherry blossoms right now. Can we say do on this show? Yeah. They're doing the cherry blossoms. We're doing cherry blossoms. Come on. You know, birds do it, bees do it. That's right. We know what they're doing. Then the jonquils show up, then the daffodils, and there's a sequence that has come to be by the way. Clearly the whores of the plant world, the daffodils, but I'm just saying. It's just on your mind. <laughs> it's just on your mind. No, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. Whatever you're into, a consenting adult, it's all good. The harvestable plants, fine. No, go so uh, this has led to monoculture, but uh, I, I go along with the idea. I mean, I no, I claim that the success of uh, genetic modification with respect to glyphosate herbicide does not necessarily mean you plant a monoculture and stress out bee colonies. Gotcha. You could, that's not the cause and effect. That's so funny when you say that. I just hear Jerry Seinfeld going, what are we going to do? There's so many flowers all at once. (laughs) (laughs) That was a terrible Jerry Seinfeld Yeah, and it was also, my understanding, that was you doing Jerry Seinfeld being, being a, a bee. bee. Yes. A female bee. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so like, by, yeah. by the way, all the bees you see are girls. They're all females. That's you very true. seldom see because a Because they bee. kick the drones out as soon as they're finished mating with the queen and it's just like they go straight Beyonce to the left, to the left, all your stuff in a box to the left. Get out. Awful. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Should I become a drone? <laughs> A uh, bee, a drone bee. A drone bee. But nominally, the way you started that, it sounds like good work if you can get it. Yeah, it does, in a way. <laughs> so there's no difference in allergic reaction and um, 
and health concerns with respect to genetically modified foods with uh, compared with organic or non-genetically modified foods. And we know that because the research has been done on mice. Oh, well, on mice and people. On people. You know, it's been going on for almost uh, 25 years. Fantastic. And nobody gets sick from it. In fact, people are, in general, they get more food from a given hectare or acre of land. And the strange thing that was pointed out to me, and I did some research, well over 90% of the world's farmers are small farmers. Right. And they all use Roundup Ready crops or genetically modified crops because they're just so much more productive. Okay. So as I say about glyphosate, and I'm not an expert on Roundup, this isn't my thing, but I've done some research. Uh, there's two things that happened when Roundup was introduced. First of all, everybody was afraid of it because it does kill every green plant. Well, this, that's something to be afraid of. Then the second thing is everybody started using it because it works so well. But see, that's <laughs> even more disturbing. Well, that's, so there you have it. It's these, This is the uh, the troubling bifurcated effect. Hey, this is scary as hell. I know what. We should all use it. Well, like, that's, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, Corey, that was a great question and um, uh, and a great answer by Mr. Bill Nye. All right. I love you, Chuck. <laughs> this is Star Talk. 